Hi there. In this video, I'll explain the concept of spatial resolution for raster data. I'll also assume that you're using raster data to create maps, not for a specific scientific purpose, but the basic ideas are the same. If you're new to GIS, you've probably seen the term spatial resolution. You might think of resolution in terms of graphic software like Photoshop. For example, if you have two versions of a photograph, one with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch and the other with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch, the one with the higher resolution will be noticeably sharper. I'll zoom into this photo so you can see the difference. For raster data, resolution refers to something different. This kind of data is commonly assigned a resolution in meters, such as 30 meter or 90 meter. This is called the sampling or spatial resolution, and it refers to how the data was collected. You may have heard of spy satellites having a resolution of one meter. This means that the images it collects can distinguish objects as small as one meter in size. That's how sampling resolution works. It's the size of each block of data that the imaging system, usually a satellite, originally collected. When it comes to sampling resolution, lower numbers equals higher detail. Higher numbers equals less detail. Here's an illustration of this concept. Here we have a piece of land that's 900 meters by 540 meters. First, we'll sample it at a resolution of 90 meters. Here's the piece of land divided into a 90 by 90 meter grid. You can see that it takes 60 blocks to cover the area at a sampling resolution of 90 meters. If we want to cover the same piece of land at a sampling resolution of 30 meters, resulting in a more detailed image, here's what that looks like. It now takes 540 blocks of data to cover the area, compared to 60 blocks. We get more detail at 30 meters, but the file size is much larger, and there's a lot more data we have to process. When it comes to detail and shaded relief, more is not necessarily better. For example, 30 meter data was sampled every 30 meters along the ground. Think of the ground as a large photograph where each pixel is 30 meters across and down. The elevation values inside that 30 meter block are averaged together to produce a single elevation value for the block. 90 meter data is sampled every 90 meters, so it has a lower resolution than the 30 meter data, meaning it's not as detailed. Some data types are measured in arc seconds. For example, SRTM 15 data has a resolution of 15 arc seconds. One arc second equals 30 meters, so 15 arc seconds equals about 450 meters. Here are some examples of the same area of western North Carolina sampled at different resolutions. I've run the DEM file through QGIS to turn them into shaded relief. You can clearly see the increase in the level of detail as the spatial resolution changes. Before you get the idea that higher resolution is always better, keep a few things in mind. Some of this data is extremely detailed. A 1 meter DEM shows every little bump and dip in the ground. For most maps, this is way too detailed and becomes distracting. It also makes the file size much bigger. The other consideration is the level of detail that makes sense for your map, especially if you're using raster data to create shaded relief. Most uses of shaded relief are not intended to display absolute geographic accuracy. They're intended to show major features like mountain ranges. This doesn't require a high level of detail. Additionally, most uses of shaded relief involve processing the elevation data through software like QGIS to tone down the level of detail and make the result more visually pleasing. There's no point in starting with a highly detailed file if you're going to smooth out most of that detail anyway. Here's what I mean. Here are two files of the same area with some additional enhancement. This is a highly detailed example, created with 10 meter data. Here's the same area created with 450 meter data. For most maps, the second one is a better choice. It gives the reader a general impression of the terrain without too much detail. Less detailed relief is also better when adding your vector information such as roads. Text labels can easily get lost against a detailed background. This doesn't mean you should never use highly detailed relief. Just make sure your relief suits the map's subject matter. What's the best spatial resolution? By now, you probably realize the correct answer to this question. It depends. 
You might think you should start with a highly detailed relief layer, giving you the option of reducing it later. Don't do it. First of all, that's hard to do, and second, large detailed relief files will slow your computer to a crawl and may even crash it. These files have a lot of pixels. If you need to reproject them in QGIS, the entire file needs to fit in your computer's memory. Decide on the level of detail you need, and what your computer can handle, before you collect the data. Here's a map I created of the Yellowstone River for a documentary. The client needed a lot of detail for it. The final file was 4 gigabytes. It was 22 inches wide at 300 pixels per inch. While I was working on the shaded relief, that file alone was over 2 gigabytes. It slowed my computer down so much that I could only perform one or two edits, then I had to save the file and restart the computer because the memory was maxed out, and that was with 32 gigabytes of memory. What spatial resolution should I use? The ideal spatial resolution depends on several factors. If you need the data for a specific scientific purpose, that will determine the resolution you need. For maps, there are two issues, the map's purpose and its area of coverage. What's the purpose of the map? The purpose of your map, the key information you're trying to convey to the reader, is the first consideration when choosing an ideal level of detail. Shaded relief is usually used as an enhancement. It adds some useful information to the map and, let's be honest here, it's just cool. Many maps benefit from showing relief, but they usually don't need to show every individual mountain or valley. In maps for hiking or mountain biking, the terrain is the whole point of the map, so a higher level of detail is justified. Maps featuring environmental issues can also benefit from greater detail. What's the area of coverage? The second factor in choosing data with the appropriate level of detail is the map's area of coverage. The larger the area, the less detail is needed or useful. If your shaded relief is highly detailed, but the final map will be 6 inches wide when printed, no one will see the detail and the map will look lousy. Don't waste time creating detail that people can't see. For city or county maps, you can use data from 10 meter to 90 meter. Maps of city areas can use any level of detail, including the 10 meter USGS data, or even the 3 meter or 1 meter USGS data where it's available. That doesn't mean you should do that. Unless the terrain is the main feature of the map, and for city maps it probably isn't, a less detailed data set is a better choice. For county maps, I usually use 30 meter or 90 meter data. For state maps, I use 90 meter to 450 meter data, depending on how important the terrain is to the map's purpose. For maps of the entire U.S., I use one of the natural earth files, such as the 1 to 10 meter manual shaded relief or the physical map of the contiguous U.S. file. For maps of small countries, I use a 90 meter to 450 meter file. For large countries, I use a natural earth file. Maps of world regions or the entire world should use one of the natural earth files. World elevation data is available at resolutions as fine as 30 meters, but that's not a recommendation to use it. For one thing, the file, or files, would be absurdly large and impossible to work with, and it would take a week to download it all. You'd have to break it into smaller units, then try to figure out how to stitch them together, and I guarantee your computer couldn't handle it. Besides, unless your map will be the size of a billboard, no one would be able to see that level of detail in the finished map, so don't make yourself crazy. Thanks for watching. See you next time.